Hey, welcome to the Cause of the Podcast. Cause that means being a person or thing that gives rise to a phenomenon that is dynamic or energizing. Hey, we're tackling topics and telling the truth. I'm Roger Gerard. Yep. So today, our topic, our chat will be about moves motivation. And don't get nervous, Keith. I know you're not a dancer. So we're not going to expose that. Or did I just expose it? Did- Perhaps. What is moves? Moves motivation in this folks in this particular conversation is talking about this phenomenon of what drives you or inspires you to work. Do you work for money or do you work from passion? You know, so when we when I was doing research on this one, Mm. I had to had to start with myself. And uh, that's uh, (laughs) I take, I'm not going to dive into that one just yet. I think you should. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm on with it. Okay. But in, here's, what the, here's what some research said. He says the average span of a career is 40 years. Yes. So when I that's, get to that, and I'm like, oh. That's a lot of time. That's a, lot, that's a whole lot of time. A lot of time. Now, 70% of which would amount to about 28 years of that 40 is spent at work. It's spent at work. At your at place work. of employment. At work. Okay. 28 so you Ooh. have 40 years to build a career. 28 of them years, you're going to be at your place of employment. Who is employing you? Okay. That is... That's a lot of time. That's a whole lot of time. Eight years. But you know what? People do that, and they don't like what they do. I, I've heard it time and time again. Like, and I don't not that they that. change industry. They may change employers, but you keep getting into these spaces where you really don't like what you do. However, I have heard people... Um, they have a lot more patience with it, and they get a little bit more forgiven about it if them checks look good in the payday. Like you, you get a different kind of yeah, a tolerance. Okay, when all right. Queen, fair, fair point. When your queen is there. But then, what what are you feeling like each day? Like, because the money, money don't bring happiness. Now I know people say, well, well I won't. I let well, me. I know people say, let me try it. Let me find it. <laughs> well. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let me see. I don't know. What I found in my time, though, is that... Money might not bring happiness, but broke sure do bring sadness. That part I know. <laughs> that well, I know. No, I think there's a lot of people out there that still are still happy with life, though. Even though they may not have all the money. Uh, it's true. It's true. It's, 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 it's relative, but... Right. 28 years, right? If you would just put it in perspective... What is going to be your drivers? But so here's the other thing, too, that I would think you have to think about in this 28-year span. Your life doesn't stay static during those 28 years, right? Exactly. Like, what may be okay years 1 through 7 changes and morphs years 8 through 12. Right. Then, then there's another evolution, years 15 through 17. So, I mean, because I you're know. growing. You're growing the yeah. whole time. But, yeah, like, yeah. you, if you're growing... You know, how do you find the places that, you know, I need to work in my passion? Mm. I, I got a prime example. My, my wife, um, she's by trade civil engineer mm. and uh, did really well with, with that part. Uh, but her passion is mm. around education. Mm. And when she got into education, when I, when I tell you that things change in our household, Wow. From this place of, I used to be like the popular one. Hey, Mr. King. <laughs> hey, there's a white guy right there. You know, I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling myself and everything. It's like, y'all see them, see me, see okay, okay. We walk up in the store now. Hey, Professor Vincent, how you doing? Oh. I mean, people, young people coming up, giving a hug. I'm you like, feel away? I, you know, I don't feel the You feel away? I don't get home. I'm like, you supposed to be talking to me. That's, that's my accolade. But she found she found a place to work in her, work in her passion. And, work in you know? her passion. and uh, you know, I, I, I can do nothing but appreciate that right there. I, you know, I will tell you, me personally, it, it really just depends on what was going on in my life. And so, you know, through college and right out of college in, in your 20s, I'm working for money. Mm-hmm. Like, I knew the things that really made me happy. I knew the things that, oh, I would love to do this every day as a job. But my focus at that time, I wanted, to, wanted the money, right? Like, there were so many things I wanted to do and places I wanted to go and this, that, and the other thing. Then when I really began to get into a place where I was like, oh, I don't like this. And, and I was able to make a couple of moves and some changes when I, I started to realize the, the work that I was doing was not lining up with my personal passions. But quickly, 
that's when kids and family and marriage come on the scene. And so you got a different set of decisions you got to make, particularly if your passion right. is not going to give you the money that you need just to survive. I, I, I think I've always been fortunate to work in my passion mm. uh, and know what my passion was early on mm-hmm. to be able to do what I'm doing today. And so mm. I, I know that I was called to work with young people. My uh, it was my going into my sophomore year of college. I worked at a, a camp and it was a it was a Christian camp and I had to raise my support. Mm. Um, and there was something that was thrilling about that mm. because I raised four hundred dollars, and Ooh. I'm right. Woo, right? right. Yeah. You know, yeah. But it was just enough for me to go back to school to get the things that you know, give me some clothes to go back to school. Mm-hmm. And it was mm-hmm. it was just enough. Mm-hmm. Um, but I knew early on what that was, and, and I remember when I graduated. You know, some couple of years later, you know, I was going and finding a job. Right, uh, first place uh, out of college was went back home uh, to work at my high school uh, as a substitute teacher. You were a I substitute, substitute teacher? teacher. Wow. And I, I tell you what. Boy, I, <laughs> yeah, I was feeling pretty good because I knew the <clears throat> the principal at the school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was going side by side with some of the, uh, you know, teachers that, you know. Yeah. I agree. But I was uh, one day, Uh-oh. young fella, Uh-oh. uh, you know, wanted to test me. And I said, oh, <gasps> man. Here we go. And I, you know, so we were standing on the bleachers. I intentionally stood up on the higher bleacher than him. You know, just, you know, because back then I was, you know, just coming off playing football. So I had my, 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 my stuff, yeah, my stuff was, my okay. stuff was right. Okay. And then he didn't back down. I said, oh, Lord. I said, you got to go to principal's office, man. Right now. And then I started questioning that call him a little bit. It's like, do, do am I really supposed to work with young people? Are you sure you know? this is what I'm supposed to be but then my first money job was yeah. working at household finance. And oh. I was I was calling people to collect money for bills. <laughs> when first I tell of all, you I would not want to get a call from you as a bill collector. <laughs> when I tell you I knew that that wasn't for me oh. and I'm trying to find me I went on and did it cuz I was making me 16 thousand dollars a year. Ooh, you was balling. Girl, I went to Montgomery Ward and Wait a minute. Me. Where? You went to where? And Does that store even exist anymore? And brought me a 13 inch color TV with a remote control. Mm-hmm. And diamonds in the back, sun rooftop, digging the scene with the gangster lane. Woo hoo! Did you have that too? A 13 inch? Yeah, Keith, you was falling out of control. <laughs> But I tell you what, I was, we were, uh, worked, you know, different shifts at mm. night during the day. I, and it was just like, yeah. yeah, it wasn't my passion. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there, there is this thing, you know, there are pros and cons to anything, right? Right. And so when you're listening to the quote unquote experts that are talking about the benefits of choosing a career that you love, like working in your passion career growth, right? Like that's the benefit because absolutely your output are, is going to be different when you're, you're 10 toes deep into work that you love when you're working in your passion. Like you're going to give it your all. Um, the motivation is there. You're going to get up. You're going to go to work. You're going to give your all. You're probably going to get um, extra. You're going to have better health, right? Because mm-hmm. you, you're mm-hmm. working in that thing that really drives you. You're going to have um, pleasure in the work environment. You're going to feel fulfilled. But conversely, the flip may be, number one, you're not making enough money. And unfortunately, your passion may turn into a job. At some point, there's a fine line and there's a switch between I love doing this, now I have to do this, Mm -hmm. right? And if it's really something that, that you truly, truly love, but now you have to do it and you don't have as much liberty in the space, What does that do for you long term? And one other thing that I believe is a God's honest truth. Passions change. Like what you are passionate about in one season may not necessarily be what you're passionate about. And so if you're working in a job that was focused on that passion, then it changed. And then what you're going to do, right? Yeah. And that's why, you know, for me, um, it was beyond the passion part. It was a calling. Like I, for me, 
knew early on that working with youth mm. uh, was for me. And But the thing is, is that that changes, like you just talked yeah. about. So there's the hands-on part of things. Yes. So in the YMCA, we have a lot of programs who, a lot of program directors who are very passionate about working with young people. And so they want to be in the midst of the program, yeah. work day in and day out with the young people yeah. so they can see that change and they can pour directly into yeah, them. Yeah, build those relationships, yep. But yeah. then, like you said, that there comes a point in life where life changes. So you may get married. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, life changed, right? Mm-hmm. You may have a have a child. Mm-hmm. Life changed. And yeah. when that when you have that child and you get married, it's like mm, you know you you yeah. different points in life. And, and when you have that child, you know that there's different expenses that come yes, along with that. Indeed. And yeah. so your passion is paying. You know, your passion of working hands on with young people mm-hmm. is is great. Uh, you know, and you may make, you know, some lesser amount of money than those who are a supervisor. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the kicker for me was that, like, man, okay, I think I can take my passion and turn this into a career. Hmm. Like, because there's options here. Like, right. I was a program director, and my, i never forget, uh, Dan Dummer, my, my, my dude, he was my executive director, later on he retired as, uh, just recently retired as uh, CEO for the Nashville One. Mm-hmm. He asked me the question of, hey, Keith, who are these uh, different donors right here that gave these amount? And it was donors that I had secured. Because you learned that when you had to get your $400. Yeah, hey, okay. hey, I okay. know how to raise a couple of dollars. Okay. So I was like, well, if he asking me this question, like I must be doing something right. Now, so why And I, I had a good time doing it. Exactly. Okay. And so let me become a supervisor so that now I can hire the Keith Mm-hmm. Right, and I can supervise the keep now. Now I'm I'm duplicating myself. Yeah. it's like multi level marketing and it's whatnot, like, right? Like um, <laughs> Iron Man or Avenger yeah. kind of thing. You duplicated yourself, but I'm still I'm, I'm still working. <laughs> Wait a minute, multi level marketing? That's a Ponzi scheme. That's well, illegal. Uh, well, yeah, that's not. Well, well, I probably you can't I'm not, do that. It's not, 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 <laughs> I'm just talking about the duplication okay, part. Okay, okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody else said like, like what? Multi level marketing? What's illegal? Like ask. Bernie Madoff. That's illegal. <laughs> you can't do that. All right. Okay. All right. Wrong choice of words. Okay. Yeah, the duplication yeah, yeah. process. Yes, 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 yes. Comes Bringing other people onto your team. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Such a way with words. <laughs> Such a way with words. But when you get to that point right there, you realize that, hey, I really like this. And yeah. you know what? Hmm. I might be able to make a little extra money off yeah. this. And so I would tell you right now, I am very comfortable and I'm uh in terms of what I look at every every two weeks. Yeah. Uh and I am working still in my passion. Yeah. And I get the opportunity to just create an event, you know, all the time. And then, like that's a You know, I'm I think I'm low key jealous that you knew what your passion was, like so early on and so definitively, because that was definitely not my path. Like I had to move around a little bit before I could figure out what my passion was. So in college, I thought my passion was dance. I was getting ready to be a dancer with Beyonce and I was going, and then I quickly realized, you know, that ain't it. (laughs) And then I decided, oh, I'm going to be a lawyer, international law, and I'm going to get into this. And mm, nope, that's not it. Mm. Banking. This is it. I found it. It's banking. No. It was not banking. Then I say, you know what? I love the kids. I love working with the kids. I love the kids. Let's do this. I'm going to work with the kids. Well, when you work with kids and then you move into that next season, like you say, and you have kids, that's too many kids. That's kid overload. Like, I was oversensitized with kids stuff. And I was like, mm, mm, I can't mm. work with kids and live mm. with kids. That's too much kids in my life. So that wasn't it either. It wasn't until years later that I really just over looking back, right, and seeing the themes and the common things that I realized, um, my passion is what is is around fairness and justice, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. that's what the law thing was going towards. Mm-hmm. I just used the wrong avenue. It's really around ensuring that this whole equal access and equity and everyone gets what they need, not necessarily the same thing, but what they need to be the best version of themselves, whatever they that they decide that is. And that's when I think things took off for me. Mm-hmm. And I started to see movement in my career, and I started to be very intentional about what was the next move? And unfortunately, in some of those decisions, the money didn't equal the passion. Right. Um, 
thank goodness, knocking on wood, it caught up. But there were absolutely times when you, when I did decide what my passion was and I was intentional about working in it, I had to make the conscious decision of which one, the money or the passion. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't know that uh, at the onset. It took me a while to kind of figure out what that was. Yeah, I was very fortunate to be able to uh, be able to have that, knowing that early on. And you had mentioned about moving. And sometimes, though, when you are in your passion, mm -hmm. it may cause you to move. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, yeah. because you're at a particular job and you're really liking it and you can see yourself building a career. My choice that I made was that, hey, where I was starting off at, one, I had to move my first job. I had to move away from from home. Uh, mm. some, some 10 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours away mm. from home to take that first full time job and, yeah. and you know, the launch into the career that was with the with the YMCA. Uh, but I saw over time like, man, this is this is something for me. Mm. Now, I, I I tell people I stepped outside uh, the Y. You stepped out. That's how step, you put it nicely. Outside because you I were thought, a traitor. You I, left. I, <laughs> I just thought, call it what it is. I thought <laughs> the grass was greener on the other side. And you realized that it was spray paint? Mm. 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 So I um, spray paint. I was working in my passion. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a little turbulence came about. Well, and I didn't want to deal with the turbulence well, right there, right? Okay, and so, okay. therefore, this opportunity rolls, and it's like, you know what? You don't even have to move. Uh, you get $5,000 more, mm. and, like, you, you're the number two guy in the whole city. Mm. And you ain't number three more blocks down the road, so I ain't got to put in no extra gas to go mm. for time to go on the web. And then it's a citywide job, you know, versus just one wide, I'm you know. Winning. I thought, I thought, I'm like, okay, I can do this. Mm -mm. Well, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. apparently Ooh, that wasn't the case. Say, if uh, if uh, you want to, you want to see God laugh, make your own plan. Yeah, tell him your plan. Boy, right? <laughs> I tell you what. He chuckled behind that. Boy, God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, he was laughing so hard, boy, to everybody. <laughs> well, I found myself in a place of uh, that was very uncomfortable, mm. uh, very, um, it was not Keith Fitz. Right. I could right, not right. be my best self in this space mm. because I thought that grass was green on the other side. Right, right, and right. And so in that process, I took a pay cut to come to back come and back. do one. Yeah. Wow, trying to realign or money. with your passion. There you go. Yeah. And yeah. you may have because you know what? I knew what I knew what it was gonna be like yeah. from a career wise to come yeah. back inside the wild, what I could do yeah. versus the place where I where I was at. Yeah, and, and so the the flip side of it that I, I, I don't want people to miss is that there are definitely going to be times where you gotta make the decision for the money, right? Like there are sometimes the way your life is set up, what your personal set of circumstances there are. Sure, you're passionate about some stuff. Sure, you would like to work in this space and, and do these things. But the reality is you need the money. You may be caring for family, for um, your, your parents, elders. You, you may have school loans, like whatever the situation is. And so there are some things that you should consider, too, when you are working just for the money. Would you like to hear what those things are? Please. Of course. I'm so glad you asked. So some of the things, of course, about working for money is the money. Right? The money. <laughs> like the money oh, real. is is going to be a perk. And if, if you can be diligent and very um, disciplined about using that money to ensure this, to line some things up, to prepare for the future so that you can eventually get to a space where you can work in your passion. If working in your passion requires you take a pay cut, then that can be a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, that little bit of a pivot where you're just working for the money. Many times where you're in, um, in, in situations and, and roles where you're working for money and because you're bringing so much money to the table, there's a level of respect. Mm -hmm. That comes with that. People yeah. are respecting yeah. you. They see yeah. your grind. Yeah. They're like, okay, there is some emotional and financial safety that happens because you have money. You're not worried about your, your bills and your living expenses. You're not worried about preparing for the future. You're not worried about taking care of your family. That There's a level of safety. And for some people, that feeling of safety is very integral, very, right? So, very, so a healthy very. and a happy um, existence that they don't feel safe. 
It doesn't matter if I'm working in my passion. It doesn't matter if everything is is roses and butterflies. Life is not right. I'm not having a right. good time. Right. So there are definitely some advantages when you may have to pivot and go down the road and get into a space where you are working for your check. And, and, and your check I, is the motivation. Right. And and what I would tell you is that you may not get the balance maybe at work, mm. but figure out then can you do that passion maybe outside so that yes. you know yes. so that you know that hey, you know what? Yeah. I want to make sure that my roof I have a roof over my head. Mm-hmm. And but also it, even in the midst of that is that in the transactional work that you may do, figure out how is how can it be transformation. Mm. So when you talk about being in the banking space. You know, if you're the person that maybe gives out loans or what have you, mm-hmm. like that's a very transactional job. But you know what? On the other end of that, there's somebody saying that, hey, I have a need. Mm-hmm. You're in a position to be able to help that individual. Pour into that individual mm-hmm. like, hey, here's a tip. Here's an inside tip of what you can do. You can do something like this or something like that in order to help that individual. And therefore, you know, that's where the passion can come in to that transformational type of, I mean, that transactional type of work. Yeah, so do you think that there are some generational differences in in decision making around do you work in your passion or do you work for money? I think today young people are, you Mm. know, they're going for the passion. Really? I I think I I mean I think there's a there's a mix. Um there's a mix in there, but Mm. I think that people want to work in their passion. Mm. I mean, because they want to do something that's about a cause, you know, yeah. something that they care about, yeah. you know, something that, you know, they want to give help to, to impact the community or just to impact lives in, yeah. in, in general. Yeah. You know, I, we, I, we were doing some uh, research here about post pandemic trends in the workplace. And some of the data suggests that some of your more seasoned workers, because of the pandemic, like there was this new realization about this whole conundrum, the passion versus money. And there was an influx of people in the, into the workforce who were completely changing careers. Mm -hmm. Like they were walking away from the money. They were walking away from things they had done for the better part of 15, 20 years Mm -hmm. that they Mm -hmm. thought Mm -hmm. was their passion point. But when the pandemic shifted and made them realign and revisit and realize some things, then they were like, I, I can't go back to business as usual or the way it was. And you have this, imp- like, I, I'm noticing now, even in the nonprofit space, when we're posting for openings for jobs and stuff, we are getting so many more applicants from the for-profit space mm-hmm. who are looking, first of all, they respect the industry in a much different way right. because of the way we had to show up during the pandemic. But they're also just looking for that opportunity to realign with their passion. And these are some people who are, you know, some they say are in that last phase of their work life, right? Like they in that last 15 to 20 years, 10 years or so before they they will probably retire. And they are making complete shifts. And it's just fascinating. Well, I mean, a lot of people also are doing their own thing. They want to be entrepreneurs. Yes. Because again, they want to go into something that they're that they're passionate about. Be their own boss. That's. I'm not mad at you. I'm I'm not mad at you. It's fascinating, and and I get it both ways from young people nowadays. Like some some young people, they'll tell you, "I'm on a paper chase. Like I'm just trying to get my money. I'm on my dough. I have a gazillion dollars in student loans, or I am straddled with debt from just trying to live, and I, I just want my money. I want that." peace of mind and then you're right there are some people that are like no i gotta do meaningful work and i want to be compensated for what i bring to the table but it it has to make sense and i i I crave that not that work-life balance but that work-life integration right Right. all of those pieces are who i am and i don't want them to brush up against each other i was i would say if you're early in your career take a look at where you are right now Mm. and then look at within that organization within that industry to see like what does it look like on the other side of that Mm. because there's absolutely people who and i'm I'm a test i'm a good testament to that is that absolutely people who make a very good living yeah uh to be able to do a lot of great things Mm -hmm. uh but also working working their passion and so You know, you have, you know, we said a stat early here that 40 years, right? You 40 have, years. 40 years, but 70% of that. I'm not even 40 years old. <clears throat> oh, gosh. <laughs> just I, 70% really? Of really? which <laughs> would amount to 28 years spent that work. So that's spent just that your spread. And so when we break that down, right there, there's 28 years, that is 245, 280 hours. 245,000. 
216,800 minutes. You did the math on this time. So when you start breaking that down like that, that's a whole lot of time. So cosmetic family that makes you miserable. That makes you miserable. Look. Wow. Passion oh, or money. Passion. Uh, you could absolutely have both. Oh my. But you need to be thinking about what you're doing right now. Are you really living in that place or working Do in that you place? Know your passion? priorities, yes. right? Have you considered your long term yes. goals? Understand the research market, pros and cons, creating a budget. Talk to your family. Don't you go out here and, and, and quit your job. And don't tell your spouse or your significant other Ooh. because I'm chasing Ooh. my passion Ooh. and, Ooh. and, and, and life. talk and talk often. Don't talk don't often. don't talk I, to your family. Don't don't I have an idea and you Ooh. made you done you done made that decision. Now that ain't that ain't gonna go over don't too well. Don't say Keith and Rod or cosmetic told you to uh, uh, No, <laughs> Keith you said talk to them early because if you don't talk early and often. Yeah, early and often. There you go. <laughs> Hey, look, fam. Thank you guys for listening to Calls Net. On oh, this episode called Moves Motivation. And subscribe and listen to us weekly. And don't be shy. Give us a five-star review. And as always, be dynamic, be phenomenal, Calls Net. Net.